वेलकम टू द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द फिल्म ऑन कम्युनिकेशन हैविंग डेल्ट विद द इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इट इज नाउ वर्थ वाइल टू लुक इन टू द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स और राधर द नेचर ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन नाउ वी आर ऑल पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट नेचर एंड कैरेक्टर ईच डिस्टिंग इन दम सेल्स ऑफन आवर फीलिंग्स आर अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ आवर नेचर एंड वी टेन टू कम्युनिकेट एज पर आवर फीलिंग्स often forgetting the nature of environment this program would help you identify or rather classify communication giving due relevance to the nature of environment let us now watch the film now let's briefly discuss uh, some of the characteristics of communication lacking in the sense this model is something like uh, you know a still picture of an event which is dynamic which is action filled uh, what i am trying to say is that communication involves dynamic events and this particular model is something like a still picture okay so it becomes necessary for us to focus on three main characteristics three main characteristics of communication uh, which essentially describe the dynamic events that are an integral part of the communication so uh we will deal with the characteristics and we don't need the model any more so i'll use the chalkboard and talk about the three characteristics the first characteristic which is very important is about the communicator now every communicator simultaneously sends and receives messages uh in other words it's not as if knowing the model it's not as if at any point in time a person is either a receiver or a sender so the first point is we are talking in terms of the characteristics here we are saying that sender and receiver sender and receiver simultaneously receive and send messages let me explain this in the context of our own discussion here as a resource person i am the primary sender and i am providing you input okay so whereas i am the sender and you are the receiver what is happening you as receivers you are you know uh, nodding your head or you are smiling so in fact you are not only receiving you are also sending a message back to me and as the primary sender okay i am receiving when you are nodding your head it's it's full of meaning you see it may not be a verbal message it may be a non verbal message but it's equally important so as the primary sender i am giving a certain message to you and i am getting back your non verbal message so i am simultaneously as a sender primary sender i am receiving as i am sending as well as receiving messages likewise you are the primary receiver in this case in this interaction but what happens you are not only receiving the message that i am giving you you are also giving your nod or your smile okay or your frown and that also you are sending that message back to me so as a receiver you are receiving as well as you are sending messages simultaneously so it's not as if looking at the model you can't say that at any point in time a person is either only the sender or a person is only a receiver now at this point in time let me also clarify that there can be certain communication situations where perhaps only a one way communication is taking place and in such a situation perhaps a person is either primarily the receiver or primarily the sender 
I will give you one example. If you are reading a book or if you are watching a film, okay, you are only receiving and you do not have an opportunity for sending because face to face communication is not taking place. But in a face to face communication situation, every communicator, okay, that is the sender and receiver, they will simultaneously receive and send messages. Is this clear to you now? So, the, the kind of model we had where we showed the sender and the receiver, it is not as if the sender is only the sender and the receiver is only the receiver, it is simultaneous receipt and dispatch of messages. The second important characteristic uh, which sort of describes the dynamic events that take place in communication is that communication cannot occur in isolation. Okay? Communication cannot or does not occur in isolation. When you are sending a message, something has happened before that. Okay? And whatever has happened before you are sending this message, uh, that has a bearing on the kind of meaning which will be attached to that message. So, every message uh, has to be looked upon in a overall context okay, as an integral part of an ongoing ever changing process and therefore, communication cannot occur in isolation. I think this is quite easy to, to understand the dynamic nature of communication. So, the third thing is that communication is irreversible. Communication is irreversible. See, all of us uh, have experienced this at some point or the other when after uttering some words or saying something to somebody, we regret having said that and we wish we could take back our words. Unfortunately, that, that is not possible because once you convey a message, once you say something to some person, then this message, it gets recorded. It is received and recorded in the receiver's memory and that is why the wise people, they always say that people may forgive, but people never forget. Okay? Why do they say that? Because they may forgive you for having said something which is, uh, you know, uh, perhaps not fair. Okay? Perhaps saying something which is uh, something similar to hitting below the belt, saying something which is unpleasant, unwarranted. But having said that, Having said that, you cannot take back your words. At best, you know, if you say that, you know, I did not mean to say that, the person will say, that is all right, I mean, you know, perhaps we can forget about it. But in fact, it always remains in his memory, it always remains in your memory. That is why you find that in any, uh, in the heat of the moment, in any conflict situation, if you utter something which you feel was not fair, which you should not have said, and you really want to retrace your steps, you cannot do that because the damage has already been done. So, communication is irreversible. What is the moral here? The moral here is that all of us must very, very carefully weigh our words. Okay? Because once spoken, you cannot take back your words. Uh, I think these uh, three characteristics of communication this will give you a much deeper insight into the total concept of communication. It is not something dynamic. Eh? It is not a set of still pictures. It is something which is very dynamic. It is something which is vivid. Now, very briefly, we will talk about the types of communication. Now, we are on to types of communication. And types of communication, one response is that we have the written 
communication and you have the oral communication. We can send a letter, we can send a memo uh, to any individual in that organization or we may speak to some person either face to face or on telephone or intercom. The other thing which is upward and downward communication. So you have the downward and you have the upward communication. Okay, fine. Say it loudly. Very good. So you also have the formal and you have the informal communication. Okay, then you have the verbal and the non-verbal. The written and oral communication, I think all of you are familiar with. In any organizational setting, uh, as entrepreneurs, uh, as professionals, uh, we make use of a combination of the oral and the written communication. That people will go in for written communication more or less for formalizing something which has been discussed. But basically, it is always better to have a face to face communication. And if you feel that there is some part of the communication which needs to be put on record, then one can have a face to face communication, oral communication, and follow it up with written communication. But written communication is also very necessary uh, in a number of other cases. For example, uh, policy statements, rules, regulations, procedures. Now, one can't go and uh, you know, discuss uh, certain rules and regulations on a face-to-face -face basis because uh, there may be so many complexities involved, it is always better to put that down on a piece of paper. Also, you know, the mission of any organization, the objectives of any organization, so that there is goal clarity, there is clarity regarding objectives. Such things, even though discussed orally, uh, there is a good enough reason for putting all these things in writing. This is for being more effective. Then coming to the downward and upward communication, what is downward communication? From executive to along the hierarchy. See, the very name suggests that downward communication is that communication uh, which comes, which flows down from the superior to one or more subordinates. And the downward communication, uh, you must have seen, it is invariably the written communication. Okay? So uh, you give instructions to people, you, you tell people about the policy, you tell people about objectives. Uh, you inform people about the targets uh, for a certain period of time. You also appraise people's work. Okay? So all these communication, types of communication, uh, where the source is a superior and it flows down the hierarchical structure to one or more subordinates, this is what we call as downward communication. Now, what is upward communication? Just the opposite of the downward communication. So, upward communication is the communication where the communication, the source is from the subordinate and the, the message or the communication is addressed to people who are the superiors in the hierarchy. So, it goes from the lower levels onto the higher levels. So, downward communication is a top-down kind of communication flow and uh, the upward communication is the communication which is flowing from bottom towards the top. Now, what is uh, formal and informal communication? See, it is the organization, it is the enterprise, the formal system of communication is designed by the organization 
and that the design is to meet the official requirements for carrying out the various activities and functions of that organization, a formal system of communication is evolved. The formal system is where the organization will specify, it will specify who will talk to whom. Okay? So, it is something like the flow of authority. The organizational chart, uh, it tells you the flow of authority. Now, likewise, you can have a flow chart for how the communication flows in any organization. Informal communication is such a communication which has not been designed by the organization. It is the social need, the human need uh, to make friends, to share experiences. So, the informal communication is that communication over which the organization has very little control, okay? Because people are bound to meet somewhere, and when people meet, they are bound to discuss and talk about matters which pertain to their own job situations, to their own settings, uh, their own feelings, how they feel about their job, how they feel about the organization. So, uh, when people talk together, they are fulfilling a social need, the need to share experiences and make friends. And because of that, you have the informal kind of communication, and we also call it as the grapevine. Have you heard of the grapevine? Kya hota hai? What is the grapevine? This is very interesting. What is grapevine? It is a form of upward communication, okay, which is informal. Now, how does this take place in any organization? There are people who meet and talk at times, maybe, you know, during the office hours, maybe also beyond the office hours. Uh, you might run into somebody uh, at a social gathering, and, you know, he may tell you something about his own job situation, how he feels. Uh, you know, working in a particular enterprise, in how he feels working, whether he is satisfied, uh, whether he is not satisfied, whether he is frustrated. Now, <clears throat> all these things, you know, uh, he shares with a friend of his. Now, that friend of his, hierarchically, may be two levels above in the same organization, or he may be a senior person in an entirely different organization. So, what happens? This piece of information concerning motivational level or job satisfaction is passed on without any regard to the formal hierarchical levels. It may be two levels up, maybe three levels down. That individual, he passes on this thing, you know, discusses it with another colleague. And so on and so forth, you will find it may go even to your spouse. You go home and talk to your spouse. She has a friend. This message goes on to the friend. And from the friend, it goes to somebody who is maybe three levels higher up in the hierarchy. Okay? So, the grapevine, it can jump. It can jump any level of, any, any number of hierarchical levels. Now, the organization has uh, very little control on the grapevine. The organization and the management, they have to learn to live with the grapevine. But the grapevine is a very important thing because it gives you a lot of feedback. It provides you very valuable feedback on how decisions taken by the management are in fact received by the subordinates. What is the level of job satisfaction? How do people feel about the jobs that they are performing? So, there is a wealth of information which is available. So, grapevine, it may be at times very unpleasant. Okay? The kind of feedback you get, it may be unpalatable, but nevertheless, I think it is worthwhile. Okay? There is some good use uh, which managers can put the feedback they get even through the grapevine. Of course, you have the verbal and the non-verbal communication. I have given you enough examples of this. Uh, if you as participants are giving a nod or you are smiling or you are frowning, the body posture, okay, uh, if you are slouching, 
you are crossing your arms and all that, it, it sends me a message. So uh, you are not using any words, but the very gestures, the, the posture, uh, you know, uh, the smile or the frown, the nodding of the head, it conveys, it's full of meaning. So uh, this is what we say that uh, communication need not be only verbal communication, it may be also non-verbal communication. And uh, both uh, these uh, types of communication are really very, very important. I think uh, we have discussed in detail the importance of communication. Okay, We have talked about the communication process. Uh, in short, how does communication take place? When one individual uh, wishes to send across a certain message to another individual, how does the transference, how does the uh, transmission of this message take place from the sender onto the receiver? Then I said the process which is depicted by the model, okay, additionally it has three main characteristics which we just now discussed. One is that every communicator simultaneously receives and sends messages. And the second thing is communication does not occur in isolation and communication is irreversible. And we have also talked about the different types of communication. Now we come to the final point and that is the guidelines for effective communication. What is, what is it that we can do or what is it that we should not do in order to make our communication more effective. Viewers, from the characteristics of communication, we have learned that communication does not take place in isolation. There has to be at least two participants and both simultaneously have to be the sender and the receiver. Something important we learned was communication is irreversible, which means that we have to be careful before we communicate the matter. We also classified communication into various forms, namely the oral or written form of communication, upward or downward form of communication, where we gave relevance to the status of the communicator, then the formal and informal way of communication, and finally, the verbal and non-verbal way of communication. In the next part of this film, which will be our concluding part, we will be giving you some important tips to better communication.